Hey everyone, welcome back. And we're finally going to be uh, copy pasting our first module as a team. And I'm super happy. Uh, it's basically a connect workflow. And the reason I called it a connect workflow is because it allows you to connect with uh, OAuth, Facebook, LinkedIn, or whatever you choose to put in here. Um, it's got a pop-up, a nifty little pop-up uh, that'll, that'll show up and give you the error codes. For instance, if an email's uh, a password's incorrect, or if an email doesn't exist. So let's do an incorrect password here. Uh, it's got proper tab ordination, a uh, little pop-up here, and uh, it basically looks cute. So I'm not gonna go through every single feature. I'll let you figure them out for yourselves, but it's basically, I tried to take everything that could possibly happen in a user's sign-up flow and put it into a one module that would be super easy for you guys to connect um, to your app through just copy and pasting with workflow in bubble, in general so at the bottom of the of the video you'll find a, a link and from that link it should take you to this page right here this editor and you should be able to um copy paste following the following following the following i'm so good at english following these steps right here so if you're able to do that uh, you should have a copy and paste workflow that functions just a few things to note it is one of the it's it follows like a new convention that i've that I've found and it uses um, error workflows to sign up a user if the email doesn't exist. So if that's not what you're looking for, this is not the connect one for you. Um, if you want the traditional uh, login, sign up, uh, different states and stuff like that, this is not the place to be. But if you want to sign up your uh, user instantly, if they type in an unrecognized email, you can do that, okay? First point of order, Put this on a separate page from the rest of your app for security reasons. You don't want people to be spamming um, your app with a bunch of different accounts. That's usually why people put <clears throat> their login sign up workflows on a different page. Uh, but that being said, let's get right into the mustard. Uh, and the mustard being it's a reusable element. So first, let's create a reusable element. So I have a new app here um, just to show you. So I'll start with a blank page here. And I will close the assistant and now we have a like a purely blank page and we should be at the same point, um, all of us together. Okay, first thing, create a reusable element by clicking add a new reusable element. You can call it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna call it reu connect. I'm gonna clone it from nothing and now we have this little box right here. Now, the next thing it says is copy and paste with workflows, the pop-up. So you're gonna go into here and you're gonna go find the actual reu connect from the link that I give you. And here you'll see pop-up message, title, and text. You're gonna right click somewhere in the gray area, in the um, blank area, transparent area, not on the actual elements themselves. You're gonna go copy with workflows, and then you're gonna go back into your app and you're gonna go paste with workflows. All right, so now you have the pop-up and it shouldn't matter. You can restyle this however you want and uh, it really shouldn't make a difference, okay? So let's go ahead and do the next step, which says copy and paste with workflows into Reu, Reu element. We did that. Now let's copy and paste the main group. And the main group is called copy paster. So you're going to go ahead and select this and you're going to go copy with workflows. And you're going to go, this is a new app one. You're going to paste with workflows here. And now you're going to see a whole whack of issues. And the reason is Bubble doesn't recognize how to link uh, all of this stuff yet. Okay, so we're going to have to do it manually. Um, and it's not going to take that long. And I'm going to walk you through it. So let's go. And when I click on it, it'll actually take you into the workflows. And the, fir the very first one is trigger a custom event, okay? My custom event is for an OAuth message. I can copy this and I can paste it into the workflows here. And you'll see we'll actually get more issues because we have to set states. Now, anytime you see set state of null, null, animate null, it's usually going to be pop-up message except for one condition. So I'll just do that. And all of a sudden, we've eliminated all of those issues. And then the OAuth FB, we can trigger a custom event, OAuth message, OAuth LinkedIn, we can, we can trigger OAuth message, and we've just got rid of a few more errors, okay? And as we go through the errors, let's go through this one here, which is button connect has an error running a workflow. It's a no such user, and the mode is email. This is basically our sign up workflow, so we're gonna sign the user up. And you can add anything to here, sign the user up, um, such as create your user file or um, you know, add information to the user, and you can plug that into here because this is basically our sign up workflow. Okay, and go to page is an error because and it's on purpose. 
um, you basically have to redirect the user to whatever page you want. If you go look at it in the functional thing, it's called the user lands. And I just put that because I knew that uh, I assumed you wouldn't have a page called the user lands. And so it would generate an error for you to point the user uh, who has just been signed up to wherever you want. And you can send whatever, um, whatever keys you want, whatever qu query parameters uh, or whatever you want. Okay. So now you got to go to page index and that removes another error. Here in this workflow, it's, if it's no such user and the mode is forgot. So if you look at the actual thing here, you have a forgot password. It has an email and I'll send a reset email. But if it's not a user, okay, if I change this to functionality or whatever at Gmail and then I click forgot password, uh, I'll send a reset email and it should say, oops, we can't find your email. So make sure you check it. Okay. So then when you click on it, you'll be able to change that, um, that basically that uh, email and that workflow, uh, we have to go set state of the pop-up, set state of the pop-up and I'm preloading messages for you, but you could basically put in whatever you want right here and animate the actual pop-up and that removes those issues. Okay. Let's go through the rest of them here. Uh, reset relevant input, set state of null. This is, whoops, I deleted it by accident. Let's control Z here, set the pop-up and set the pop-up and animate the pop-up. Boom, we got rid of a bunch more. Here, this is another, uh, it's when you send reset email. So let's set state of the pop-up and this will say, uh, we sent an email and you can find it and we're gonna animate the pop-up, okay? And lastly, this is when the connect button is clicked, we can go to the page called uh, wh whatever page you want to send your uh, connected user to. Okay, so just to keep in mind, these are two different pages. These are two different sends. This is when a user logs in and this is when a user signs up. Okay, just something to keep in mind for your own UX flow. However, you decided to set it up, you can change that over here. Okay, all of a sudden we have no errors, but there is a problem because this right here is on a on a workflow if you're it starts on social accounts and when you click on it it'll actually um have a workflow to set it to email functionality and the way that this works is these green boxes right here and these green boxes full disclosure this is not supported by bubble it was just investigated as a bug and they've decided to not remove it uh somebody had put it, this it had been working for years somebody came on the forum and decided that it was a bug listed it as a bug and Bubble said they would look into it. I have asked them to communicate with, like with all of us, basically, if they decide to change it, because I know I'm not the only one who uses this type of workflow. Uh, but that's your disclosure right there. So if you want to change this up, feel free to. If you want to use it the same way I do, that's how I'm getting my little lines to pop in and pop out, OK? So the way that it works is I have two states when an input is focused or when an input isn't focused and that basically animates the lines and the lines will pop in and pop out and there are borders on the lines below that disappear. For instance, here, when the input is focused, it'll basically become uh, a very light border so that the blue can show over top of it or the red in the case of it being um, invalid. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy those over. Let's start with the first one here in the workflows. When input email is focused and shape email is visible, let's do the exact same thing over here. Let's paste that in and it can't find the uh, input. So let's go here and let's go input email. And that's this one right here. I left the conditionals in for you. Make sure you delete them at the end. But let's go input email is focused. Let's copy that. And that's the one we're doing right now. Input email is focused and shape email isn't visible. Let's paste that in and let's go and shape email isn't visible. Then we're going to animate shape email and we're going to set state of this is the one that I was talking about, which is different. Type in X twice, you'll find HTML state holder, which will change it to email. And now we're done here. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to move this over here. Let's right click here. Copy this one when input email isn't focused and shape email is visible. So let's go paste that in here back to design input email isn't focused. Let's copy that. Let's go to workflows. Let's paste that in here and go and shape email is visible. Okay. Uh, you don't need to add the shape email is visible, but it does handle some edge cases. So I would just suggest doing it anyways. And the element that we're going to animate is the shape email, of course. And the two other ones are a little bit more simple. Let's go ahead and copy that, paste it in. And the Condition is when input password is focused and shape password isn't visible. So let's go ahead and find input password. 
in our design tab. Let's copy the uh, expression. Let's go back to workflow, paste it in here. And once we have here and shape password isn't visible, we can animate the shape password itself. And then we can actually copy it and paste it and do the reverse. So let's go to design. Let's copy this. Let's remove these two conditions because why would we leave them now that we don't need them anymore? Let's paste it into uh, here when input password isn't focused and the shape password is visible. Then we're going to animate it expand out, expand out, shape password. Nailed it. Okay, so now this should actually all work, I think, or maybe I hope. So let's go ahead and page index. Let's hit that preview button. And now we should be able to log in a user. Um, okay, so let's, right. So during my test, I had messed up the green, the green part and I had taken the HTML out of the uh, group here and I had moved the group down. Uh, in our case, let's go back here. And I'm really mad that, that happened to me. I can cut this and just put it back in. It's 30 by 30. With a Y of 1 select for his parent, Y of 1, Y of 0. Conditional, no. And I'll just reapply the. There's always something, eh? Jeez. There's logo link. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's try to load a user in. Here's a user that doesn't exist because if you remember, this is a brand new app. We're going to give it asdf at gmail.com, the password of asdf, and connect it. Realistically, this should, yep, it should sign me up. So never, and if I go right here, just to give you guys some proof, sirens. Sorry, sirens, I just wanted to mute them out. All users, you'll see the user has appeared here, okay? Um, and you can basically do the same thing. Uh, there is a debugger for you to test it in um, the actual app that I give you a link to. And this will just show you who is signed in and who isn't. So let's copy this with workflows and let's paste it in here with workflows. Paste with workflows. So now we have a debugger. We'll be able to sign in, sign out, and test some stuff. And I'm just going to do one more test. Okay, let's log you out. And let's log another one in. And it should actually create the new user. And it's, it's a little bit slower, but that's why I added the spinner. Uh, you'll notice it took about three seconds to sign a new user up. And to log a user in, it should be fast. Let's go check it out. This is a user that exists very, very fast, like a split second. So we do have uh, a fully functional um, login connect workflow that you can paste over relatively quickly. Um, full disclosure, whoops, I, don't, I didn't want to say that again. <clears throat> Something to note is that this logo up here uh, is definitely mine, and you definitely want to get rid of it. So just click on here, it's an SVG, just delete the code. You cannot delete the element. This is state holder, it holds states, and this is what everything is based on. So if you need to um, add your own logo, you could just go into the group below it, select first parent, and you can definitely upload your own image. Uh, or you can, if your logo is SVG as it should be, I mean, who doesn't have an SVG as a logo these days for how big and how small they get, um, they get you know, tossed around and, if you, if you want it to look good, make an SVG. If you have an SVG, paste it in here. Uh, this is Square. You can play around with it. You can change all of the styles and the design to suit whatever your app looks like. And uh, yeah, have fun with it. And also, let me know uh, how it's been going for you and uh, what you've been using it as, because I would love to see it in action. All right. So any comments, leave them below, and I'll try to get back to them, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.